when you leave out Nike, the two most iconic sporting brands would be Adidas and Puma. But how the two brands came to being is a story beyond the usual rivalries of two corporate behemoths. In 1924, in a small town called Herzogenor near Nuremberg, the two brothers Rudolf and Adolf Dassler, or Adi and Rudy for short, set up the Dassler Brothers shoe factory in their mother's laundry room. They were not new to shoemaking. Their father in fact worked for a shoe factory and both of them were trained as shoemakers. The earlier days were tough, having to resort to a stationary cycle and pedal power to run their equipment. But things started to change when Adi decided to follow J.W. Foster & Sons' revolutionary running pumps, which included spikes, and deciding to improve on them. Until then, running shoes had gone through little if any evolution. They looked like regular men's dress shoes made with very hefty spikes on the bottom. They were hot, heavy, and did not look at all like the multicolored running shoes we see today. Probably the only major difference it had seen until this point was the cowhide shoes had been replaced with lightweight kangaroo hides. Adi Dassler started to experiment with what he had learned in his days as a shoemaker to see if he could improve them with lighter materials and better spikes. He started to play with canvas and rubber for the build and hand forged custom spikes. He was of the belief that one shoe does not fit all events. He came up with a range of shoes that would match the particular event. For example, he designed a shoe with spikes at both back and the front of the shoes for high jumpers, while only keeping the spikes at the front for sprinters. In 1928, they managed to provide a few German athletes with these custom shoes for the Olympic Games in Amsterdam. And when Hitler rose to power in 1933, the brothers were quick to join the Nazi party and gain advantage of the situation. However, when the Berlin Olympics came around in 1936, the brothers managed to reach out to Jesse Owens with their shoes. This would mark the true turning point for the brothers, as Jesse Owens would go on to win four gold medals in the sprint and long jump events and become the most successful athlete in the 1936 Olympic Games. Soon after this success, their shoes will come into high demand and the business will take off in exponential fashion. But as the Second World War was brewing in the background, their relationship started to sour too. No one is exactly sure what had happened between the two. One story goes that during an allied bomb attack, Adolf and his wife took cover in a bomb shelter already occupied by Rudolf and his family. The dirty bastards are back again, Adi had said quietly, <gasps> apparently referring to the planes. But Rudolf thought the comment was an attack against his family. Of course, this story was never verified. Soon thereafter, Rudy was called for service while Adolf kept the business running and opening their factory to the Wehrmacht force, making army boots and later the 88mm Panzertrek, also known as the Tanks Bane. Rudy, at the end of his time in the military, falls into the hands of the Allies. Unlike Rudy, Adi has had his reservation about the regime and Rudy suspects that his capture was a result of his brother turning on him. This is another version of their fallout. Another set of rumours suggests that the brothers were cheating with each other's wives and Rudy having fathered Adi's son. Whichever was the case, four years after the war has ended, Rudy calls it quits with Adi and went across the Auroch River to set up a new factory. He went with the name Ruda, trying to compete with his brother's company now named Adidas after Adi Dassler. Rudy quickly changed his company name to Puma. Soon after, the small village of Herzenorch will divide between the two camps along this family feud, earning the nickname the village of the crooked necks, referring to the villagers who would look towards each other's shoes to probe which camp they'd belong to. At one point, the rivalry would extend so far that the shoes you wore would determine which pub you went to or where you would go for your groceries. Klaus Peter Gabelein of the local Heritage Association once told, quote, there was a time when you would have risked the wrath of your colleagues and family if, as an employee of one of the companies, you married the employee of the other. Even religion and politics were part of the mix. Puma was seen as the Catholic and politically conservative, while Adidas as the protestant and social democratic." End quote. In the present, neither company is controlled by the descendants of their founders. The brothers are long since dead in the 1970s. Puma is majority owned by the French luxury goods maker Kering, who also owns many brands like Gucci and Yves Saint Laurent. Adidas is owned by many institutional and private investors. 
The factories have also moved on to countries with cheaper labor, and both brands having incredible global awareness, albeit Adidas clearly having the bigger market share. Both companies still have their headquarters in this small town, and anyone in this small town of cobbled streets and half-timbered houses will tell you that their rivalry is mostly gone, with employees from some 90 nations now working in this same town. In 2009, a symbolic football match was played between the two companies to mark a new era of peace. Coming to the conclusion of this story, many believe that the two brothers never made peace with each other and now have their gravestones on either side of the town. But according to Puma's in-house historian and close confidant of Rudy, in 1974, just six months before Rudy's death, they got their drivers to take them to a secret meeting in Nuremberg for half a day. But of course, they could never tell their wives, and certainly not their workers, because it would have been bad for business. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.